Happy sunshine, family. Lunacy's back. We're taking a look at the post-trial filings that Hat J filed on the 23rd of February, 2018. Pacer document 145 is what we're going to take a look at first. Let's transition over to that. Do I got my purple pointer? Nope. Hold on. Let's try that. All right. United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville, the United States of America, in all caps, v. Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, in all caps. This is number 3 colon 17 dash CR dash 0082 dash 002. <clears throat> Honorable Thomas A. Varlin, comma, Chief USDJ, U.S. District Judge. Honorable C. Clifford Shirley Jr., Chief USMJ or U.S. Magistrate Judge. Notice of filing. The defendant. I, I'm surprised that Heather's using this word defendant here. The defendant, Heather Antucci Giraffe, hereby files first due notice of due acceptance of evidence of separate acts of foreign agents pursuant in part to standing precipe number two and number three. Document 101 restated with issue date February 14th, 2018. Respectfully submitted uh, by Francis Lloyd, which is Heather's elbow counsel. And he hereby certifies that a copy of this document was filed electronically. Notice of this filing will be sent by operation of the court's electronic filing system to all the parties indicated on the electronic filing receipt. All other parties will be served by regular U.S. mail. Parties may access this filing through the court's electronic filing system. So we've got the, oh, what are the, the stamp, the electronic stamp here from the court systems that it was filed on February 23rd, 2018. It's document 145, and it's page ID number 15825, whatever that means. All right, the original instrument, due notice. Notice to principal is notice to agent. Notice to agent is notice to principal. That's just saying that if you tell one person who's Part of the group being notified, you've told them all. Reference, the United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville. United States of America, Plaintiff v. Randall Keith Bean and Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, Defendants. Number 3, colon 17, dash CR, dash 82, Varlin Shirley, the District and Magistrate Judge. Uh, we've also got 3 colon 17 dash CR dash 82 dash TAV or Thomas A. Varlin DCP. I'm not sure what DCP is, but we've also got the CCS, CCS1, CCS2. And we also have uh, the case number from the identity hearing in Washington, D.C., which is 1 colon 17 dash MJ dash 531 dash DAR or Deborah A. Robinson and inclusive of all records therein, thereto, and therefrom. Handwritten here, first due notice of due acceptance of evidence of separate acts of foreign agents pursuant in part to standing precipice number two and number three, documents 101 restated, issued 2-14-18. To Deborah C. Poplin, okay, that's what the DCP was up here, right here. That's it. Wow, DCP is Deborah C. Poplin. I wonder why when I highlight the handwritten DCP, uh, okay, so the OCR is thinking that's a TX period P, interesting. Deborah C. Poplin and the all caps version of Deborah C. Poplin, the alleged United States specifically and particularly clerk of court for the Eastern District of Tennessee, Deborah C. Poplin, and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto, hereafter referred to as just alleged clerk of court, 
With reported address, Howard H. Baker, Jr., H.S. Courthouse, 800 Market Street, Suite 130, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37902, and phone number of 865-545-4228, and her successors and assigns. <clears throat> Two, Thomas A. Varlin and Thomas A. Varlin, the all-caps version, the alleged United States, specifically and particularly District Judge Chief, for the Eastern District of Tennessee and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto hereafter, quote, alleged district judge, end quote. With the reported address, Howard H. Baker, Jr., H.S. Courthouse, 800 Market Street, Knoxville, Suite 143, Tennessee, 37902, and a phone of 865-545-4762 and his successors and assigns. To C. Clifford Shirley Jr. and the all caps version, alleged United States specifically and particularly Magistrate Judge Chief for the Eastern District of Tennessee, C. Clifford Shirley, and to all alleged principals thereof and alleged agents thereto hereafter, quote, alleged Magistrate Judge, end quote. With the reported address, Howard H. Baker, Jr., H.S. Courthouse, 800 Market Street, Suite 144, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37902, and a phone number of 865-545-4260, and his successors and assigns. We've got another biometric seal here, an issue date of, well, this says 2-14-18, Hat J's initials there. Page one of 23. To James Douglas Overby and the all caps version, the replacement of Nancy Stollard Har with reported address 800 Market Street, Suite 211, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37902, and a phone number of 865 545 4167. Alleged United States, specifically Department of Justice. Parentheses, Knox, USAO. That's the Knoxville U.S. Attorney's Office. And particularly, alleged United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee. And to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto hereafter, referred to, quote, alleged United States Attorney, end quote, inclusive of his successors, assigns, and... A, Cynthia F. Davidson and her all-caps counterpart, the alleged assistant United States attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee, and B, Anne-Marie Sfalto and Anne-Marie Sfalto, the all-caps version, alleged U.S. assistant U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee, two et al., copy two, Randall Keith Bean and his all-caps counterpart, item sonums, that means anything that sounds like Randall Keith Bean or looks like Randall Keith Bean, the alleged defendant, for all to rely upon. Notice of filing as follows regarding documents 97, 104, 103, 105, 106, 109, 110, 111, 114, 115, 117, and 118. Signed, dated February 14, 2018, Heather Antucci Giraffe with a biometric fingerprint seal. Initialed and thumbprinted, issue date 214.18. This says page 2 of 23. Didn't the last one say page 2 of 20? No, that was 1 of 23. All right. Handwritten at the top of Page three, duly accepted as evidence of separate acts done by foreign agents pursuant to Standing Declaration Document 102 and Standing Precipe Document 101. Specially Precipes, probably means specifically Precipes, number two and three, restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full as to Cynthia F. Davidson et al., an issue date, February 14th, 2018, Heather Antucci Giraffe. Let's see. Over on the left side of the page, we have handwritten 
that goes 90 degrees going from the bottom to the top is the direction of the writing. Maxim colon, nothing is born from fraud. 2, 14, 18, Heather Antucci giraffe. We got her fingerprint there or thumbprint. And on the other margin, notice colon, each act being a separate and additional, each act being a separate and additional to those incurred and ledgered on 10, 18, 17, 9, 01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is document 55, restated. 2, 14, 18, Heather Antucci, Giraffe. <clears throat> okay, US of Amer United States of America v. Randall Keith Bean and Hat J. 3, colon, 17, dash CR, dash 82, Judges Varlin and Shirley. Notice to principal is notice to agent. Notice to agent is notice to principal. The United States of America's motion to amend indictment to correct clerical error. Comes now the United States of America by and through J. Douglas Overby, United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee, and respectfully moves this court to amend the indictment document 3, pursuant to Rule 7E of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure, to correct the statutory citation in paragraph 19, subsection A, in count 7. The citation at the end of paragraph 19, A, on page 6 of the indictment, currently reads, quote, Title 18, U.S.C., Section 1956A1B, subsection lowercase i. The citation should be amended to read thusly, Title 18, U.S.C., Section 1956A1A, lowercase i. In support of its motion to amend the indictment, the United States would show that the, correct, that the incorrect citation was a typographical error that the United States just discovered. However, because paragraph 19, subsection A, tracks the proper language of the citation, the defendants are on notice to sub substantive charge against them. Therefore, the United States moves to amend the form of the indictment to reflect the correct statutory citation. Originally, an indictment may be amended only by subsequent action of the grand jury, as decided in Steroni v. United States. 361 U.S. 212, 215 to 216, 1960. However, the general rule requiring representment to the grand jury protects the rights of a defendant against a material change in the substance of the charge, not the form. Thus, amendments to the indictment are permitted when the change concerns matters of form rather than substance. See Russell v. United States, Watson v. Jago, U.S. v. Hall, U.S. v. Fruchtman. In an indictment, the defendant's name is a matter of form and not of substance. Thus, an indictment may be amended to reflect the true name of the individual charge. See U.S. v. Owens and U.S. v. Campbell. The indictment may be amended where the change will not amend the charges against the defendant. The indictment must fairly apprise the defendants of the charges against them, U.S. v. Willoughby. Here the change is a matter of form rather than of substance. The indictment unquestionably apprised the defendants of the charges against them. The defendants have been put on notice of the United States' intent to prosecute the defendants for money laundering conspiracy pursuant to... Uh, 18 U.S.C. 1956 A1AI because the United States put the substance of the statute and citation in written language of paragraph 19 subsection A. Further, paragraph 19 cites that defendants to all of 18 U.S.C. 1956 without reference to any subsection of statute. Wherefore, the United States moves for an amendment to the indictment to reflect the correct statutory citation in count 7, paragraph 19, subsection A. Respectfully submitted J. Douglas Overby, United States Attorney. Submitted by Cynthia Davidson, 
signed by Cynthia Davidson, Anne-Marie Svaltos also listed here. Looks like they've got a different address here of 1110 Market Street, Suite 115 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37402, with another phone number of 423-752-5140. Uh, she signed her Certificate of Service for this particular document on January 22nd of 2018. All right, here's another document that's duly accepted as evidence of separate acts done by foreign agents pursuant to Standing Precipe Document 101, specifically Precipe's number two and three, restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full as to April J. Wilson, Thomas A. Varlin et al. Issue date 2-14-18, Heather Antucci Giraffe. Also handwritten, notice to principal is notice to agent, notice to agent is notice to principal. Maxim, nothing can be born of from a fraud over here on the left margin. Also see doc 102 restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full. 214.18, Heather Antucci draft or thumbprint. Note, each act being separate and additional to those I'm not sure what that word is. Incurred and ledgered on 101817. That's incurred, I think. 901 AM, document 55 restated. Consent to modify conditions of release. I, Heather Antucci Giraffe, have discussed with April J. Wilson, pretrial services probation officer, modifications of my release conditions as follows. The bond conditions originally imposed in the Eastern District of Tennessee, Knoxville, remain the same with the exceptions of the following change. Bond condition 7G is amended as follows. Avoid all contact directly or indirectly with any person who is or may be a victim or witness of the investigation or prosecution, including with the limited expectation that you may meet for purpose of trial preparation only with the presence of elbow counsel, and you shall coordinate said meeting with U.S. Marshal Service. Bond Condition 7P is amended as follows. Participate in one of the following location restriction programs and comply with its Requirements as directed, uh, I, or little letter I, curfew, you are restricted to your residence every day from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. during the course of the trial. Then I consent to the modification of my release conditions and abide by this, mo and agree to mod abide by this modification. All right, signed by both Heather and April. Defendant is defense counsel pro se, see signature above. This is Francis Lloyd's signature. All right, here's another one. Duly accepted as evidence as separate acts done by each foreign agent pursuant to Standing Declaration Document 102 and Standing Precipe 101, specifically Precipe's number 2 and 3, restated and incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full as to Thomas A. Varlin, Julie Norwood, Rebecca Lockwood, Cynthia Davidson, Anne-Marie Svalto, Deborah C. Poplin et al., This is the United States of America v. Randall Keith Bean and Heather, it just says Randall Bean, and Heather Tucci Giraffe. Proceedings, jury trial day one, government's motion doc 97 to amend indictment is granted. Honorable Thomas A. Varlin, Chief U.S. District Judge. Julie Norwood, the deputy clerk, Rebecca Lockwood, the court reporter, Cynthia Davidson and Anne-Marie Svalto are the U.S. attorneys, Francis Lloyd, elbow counsel for pro se defendant Tucci Giraffe, Stephen McGrath, elbow counsel for pro se defendant Bean, 
The jury impaneled and sworn in as follows, 47 jurors present, 14 seated, 29 jurors challenged, four not used. Rule was requested, witnesses sworn, introduction of evidence for government began, case continued to Wednesday, January 23rd until further trial. So handwritten here by Heather, notice to principal is notice to agent, notice to agent is notice to principal, each act being separate and additional to those incurred and ledgered on 10 18 17, 9 01 a.m. Eastern Time, document 55 restated. Signed and dated, thumb printed 2 14 18 by Hat J. Okay, here's another document. So this is the proceedings for day two. This is another uh, document that Heather is claiming as evidence of separate acts done by each foreign agent pursuant to standing declaration doc 102 at all. I've read that several times. So day two of the trial, those proceedings, that's evidence. What do we have here? Here's an order. So this is the ruling. This order is to reflect the court's oral ruling on the government's motion to amend the indictment to correct a clerical error. So that was covered uh, in the motion that I read a few documents ago. So this this written ruling here is used as another evidence of separate acts of foreign agents. All right. The proceedings for day three, that's also evidence. And day four and day five, each one of these is a separate act that is being incurred and ledgered with the maxim, nothing can be born of a fraud written in the left margin of each one of these documents. So here's trial day six, trial day seven, trial day eight. Now look at this, trial day eight. So the jury deliberated from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. basically. And then they, so what, about two hours? There's no way that they looked at, at any of the UCC paperwork. So they found him guilty. Now look at this, the sentencing. June 12th. for Randall Keith Bean and June 26th for Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. So, so they've got to wait until the middle of June to be sentenced. I don't know how standard that is. All right. This looks like a witness list here. So the witness list of all the people that testified is evidence. Here's the certificate of service from Heather. All right. Okay, so what I see this entire document here is a gathering of several documents from the trial and Heather appears to be saying that these documents are evidence of separate acts done by each foreign agent pursuant to her standing declaration document 102 and the standing precipice 
of document 101, specifically precipice number two and three. So she's continuing to give the same message to the courts. All right, well, that's just the first one or the first two of, of what was filed. And we will be back. Let's get over to this page. And we'll be back uh, with, with another one. Um, so far, uh, not much to piece together other than it looks like Heather is letting the courts know that she is taking the trial proceedings as acts of wrongdoing. All right, we'll be back soon with some more document readings. I love you guys a lot. Thank you for all the high vibrational comments and emails. They sure do help a lot. I love you guys a lot. Bye-bye.